man, you don't know. You don't know about Gex the Gecko. No, sir. You probably saw this game hanging out in the Walmart shelf on, like, the N64, PlayStation 1, one of the two, PlayStation not two. You looked at it, didn't know what it was, and bought the next Mario game. Mario 65 and a half. Because you were afraid to take a chance. You didn't want to buy something without knowing what it was. You didn't see it on TV. It didn't come out on the NES. It wasn't a movie. It wasn't a TV show. But you're not alone in this, because hardly anybody bought the Gex games. And because of that... You don't know. You don't know about Gex the Gecko. This is where the intro goes, do da do da. Gex the Gecko was doomed to fail from the start. It was doomed to fail. Why was it doomed to fail? Because the first game ever for Gex the Gecko came out on the Panasonic 3DO. Raise your hands if you own that. Raise your hand if you know what that is. Put it down, don't lie. So to tell you what Gex is, I gotta tell you what a 3DO is. Okay, a 3DO was a console in 1990, whatever the fuck. The 3DO was weird in the fact that more than one company built the 3DO. Panasonic was the main one, but there was also versions by Sanyo and Gold Star? Who the fuck is- Wait, that's LG? But who gives a crap about that? Were there any good games on the 3DO? <laughs> Actually, I'm lying. There's two. There was Gex and I think you know this one already. So basically when the 3DO came out, it needed a mascot and that was the whole idea of Gex to be the 3DO's mascot. They wanted him to succeed so bad. So bad, in fact, that some 3DOs actually came with Gex. But it was not meant to be because the 3DO didn't really have any other good games on it, and it cost more than two PlayStation 1s. Seriously, I looked it up. And that trend continues today. If you had to go buy a 3DO off eBay, and why would you, it costs anywhere from about $150 to $300, depending on what it is and what it comes with. Do you know how much a PlayStation 1 sells for on eBay? 17 fucking dollars. I mean, hell, if we're throwing our money away, let's buy us a Philips CDI. Everybody knew the 3DO was doomed to die, even the people that made Gex. That's why they ended up porting the Gex game to PlayStation 1, and every game thereafter was on PlayStation 1. I mean, that's more likely to sell anyway, because the PlayStation 1 has got more games than Margaret Thatcher's got back hair. But notice the title of this video is You Don't Know About the Gex Trilogy. Yes, there's three games, three main games in the Gex series. And we're going to look at all three of them, starting with the one that was originally on 3DO, but ported to the PlayStation 1. And that is, of course, what we're going to be looking at, because I am not spending a shitload of money on no 3DO. Fuck that shit. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Gex is a gecko. No shit. Not only is he a gecko, he's a potato. A couch potato. You don't know what that is? It's basically what you are right now, but with a television. Reckon my day, you had to watch whatever was on. And sometimes they'd cut off some of the show so they could put more advertisements. And we liked it! You know what else I like? Showing you people the game. Okay, so Gex is watching TV. He eats a bug. The bug is actually a bug made by an evil dude named Evil Dude. Now, his name is Rez, but who cares? And after he eats the bug, Rez puts him in the TV. They're sucked inside instead. Let's get it on. Oh yes, Gex talks a lot. Remind me to tell you why. Yeah, this place has all the warmth of a Dick Clark special. So the very first Gex game is a side-scroller with a little bit of an overworld to begin with. Woo, who does that? Gee, let's get back to the mystery van. Aha, 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 shut up. Well, here it is. Here's Gex. Are you impressed yet? So let's get familiar with the controls. Apparently, you can lick. You can swipe your tail. The tail swiping is your main attack, but you can also ground pound by holding down. You can pound holding down, hey, hey. The licking is for grabbing items. The question marks tell you what to do. It's tail time. And apparently also checks for headphone users. You can Spider-Man your way up walls since he's a gecko and has sticky feet. Gross. Oh look, a guillotine. Hey, I wonder if you chop his tail off, he'll grow another lizard. I'll be damn. Like I said, there's items in the game that you can use your tongue to grab, but some of these, I don't know if they even do anything. 
not even raise the score. There are a couple of useful ones. There's one that puts a tornado around you that makes you invincible, and there's also a fire breath thing. Let me show you the most aggravating and dumb enemy in the game. A TV helicopter. Kill your TV, man. They always seem to be right where you need to be, and you have to hit them just right or you're gonna take damage. They do only take one hit to kill, but when you kill them, they count down and explode. And that hitbox when they explode is almost twice their size, it seems. So I'll actually end up overcompensating just to get out of the way of the blast. I wish that was the only thing I was overcompensating for. I really don't like the boss battles in this game, and it's kind of hard to explain why. It's not that they're difficult, they're just aggravating. It takes a while to figure out what the puzzle is you're trying to solve in order to kill these bosses, and after you do, it just feels kind of grindy. The fact that they're not difficult could be the problem altogether. Like, it takes a while to figure out how to kill somebody, and then when you do, it's like, ah. Uh. The one boss that did piss me off, though, was this fat Superman guy. I hated this motherfucker. You have to try to drop these anvils on him to kill him, but the way his sprites are animated, he moves around so much, and the anvils are so slow. These levels with the rockets, yeah, they can kiss my ass. There's two rockets you jump on. The first one goes straight ahead, and that's fine. Self-explanatory. It's a moving platform that blows up. But damn, man, these purple rockets, I can't figure them out. They're supposed to change direction depending on where you stand on the rocket or some crap like that, but I never could get it to act right, and I always end up falling down. I tried jumping up and down on it, but that made it even worse. It's almost like they're covered in Vaseline. Have you ever tried jumping up and down on a lubed up rocket? Your mom has, that's why you exist. And this is where the helicopter TVs really come into play. They blow up right on top of the damn rocket and you gotta jump out the way and hope to God you don't fall off the rocket. Look at this bullshit. I hit the TV, I jump on this block, I jump back down, the TV explodes. That one part killed me about two or three times. I kept that recording of it because I felt like I did something. And here's the vertical ones. Oh, those are fun. You know what you gotta do? You gotta jump on them just right so you'll stick to the side of them. If you try to hit them from the top, it'll hurt you. And if you miss and fall on the launch pad, the rocket that's spawning right under it will hurt you. And how about we stop talking about this level before I have a fucking aneurysm? No, you know what? No, you need to know. This was a stupid level and it chap my ass. You see that second arrow down there on the bottom? It leads you to believe there's something down there. Now there's something on the other side of the arrow, but there's nothing over there on the other side, the point it's actually pointing at. What made matters worse was I had to wait for another rocket to spawn. I must have moved left and right, jumped up and down, everything I knew how to do to try to figure out how I could get that damn rocket to spawn. And it seemed like I was stuck, but then finally, somehow or another, I got a rocket to spawn. The bullshit didn't stop there. Apparently there's some kind of pattern of how you're supposed to jump on these rockets. And this shit right here is where I did most of my dying, right here. It took me forever to finally figure out the pattern, and then when I did, it took me forever to actually get it right. Also, remember that vertical rocket I was stuck in? For some reason, it kept triggering Gex's voice. Hope I don't make a rocket and end up on an old game of Asteroids. I'm working without a net here. Rocket man! I wanna be a rocket man! I'm working without a net here! I'm working without a net here! Shut the fuck up! You know something else I really don't like about Gex? Is it has what I like to call a MacGuffin system. MacGuffin! Google it! The crystal shards, the seven chaos emeralds, the stars, the shine sprites. It seems like just about every side-scroller or platformer game in general has something like this. You have to pick up X amount of something in order to unlock more levels. Though some games give you a little bit of leeway and you don't have to collect all that many, or when you collect it, the level's over. But imagine my surprise when I finished the first stage of Gex and realized that the other levels had not been unlocked yet. Why weren't the levels unlocked. You got to find remotes. The remote controls are hidden all across the stage and before you can complete the stage and unlock another one, you have to find that remote. Now it wouldn't be so bad if like the game reminded you when you got to the exit, hey you didn't get the remote dumbass. Imagine if I had done that at that rocket level after doing so much to get through it and losing so many lives and watching so many Gexes die and so much of my sanity wailing away. It happened and I broke things.
I don't know, man. I really want to like this game, but it's not bad. It's just not that great. There's just so much holding it back from being good. It's like it's just right on the edge of being good, but it's just not there. Even the final boss wasn't all that great. In fact, it was kind of annoying. And that fucking noise, oh. I guess if I could congratulate Gex on something, it holds the world record for the longest video game ending in history. Now you can only get this ending by getting 100%, which I did not because I got a cheat code. Sony Vegas tells me that the ending clocks at a record-breaking, earth-shattering motherfucker of a 26 minutes. And for a vast majority of that 26 minutes, you just see this static TV screen and this green text telling you how awesome you are. I'm dead serious, this is like eight minutes of it. Just think what you could have done today instead. You could have found a cure for cancer. You could have found an alternate fuel source that didn't need dead dinosaurs. You could have had a, a hit grunge album. You could have seen the sun for once. Hey, you know. That bright orange ball that seems to hang around the sky during the day. So what are you waiting for? Go have a life. Get out of those superhero pajamas and do something. Feel the sunshine on your phosphorescent burned face. You're done. You came. I have a fetish for TV static. You saw. I won. There's a whole section where they show you, like, concepts and storyboards and stuff like that. And, you know, if this was a good game, I'd care, but I really, really don't. Well, when Gex came out, it turned out it got positive reception, positive reviews, and critical great reception, like a television. It was even voted the best game on the 3DO. Compared to what, this? Take your damn clothes off! You could have a game about a Chinese midget hermaphrodite stripper def Advocating on a dead cow and you'd still be better than whatever the shit was on the 3DO. You put that against a talking gecko, a talking gecko's gonna look pretty good. And I mean, why not a talking gecko? Worked out pretty good for these people. But yeah, y'all, I tried to like this game. I, I know it's considered the good 3DO game, but it's still mediocre and aggravated the shit out of me in a lot of places. And you know what's bad? There's two more of these damn games. So I'm not done reviewing. You know what? No, no. I am. I'm done reviewing. I'm not reviewing these other games. Fuck those games. If they're as bad as this other game, I ain't no way I'm gonna... Hey, boys and girls, if you liked what you saw, you might want to subscribe to me, though you might not. I don't judge. I got a Twitter, I'm Stuart K. Riley, and I got a coffee. That's K-O-F-I coffee. You donate tips, I buy games. Trust me, it's a good system. Trust me. I'm a coyote. Would I lie to you? Would I? I'd probably knock down your garbage, I'd probably eat your cats, but would I lie to you? Huh? 